something you can't fix. If you can't fix what's broken, you'll, uh, you'll go instead. It's Jay and Adam. It's Previewed. It's Previewed's Fix It with Adam and Jay. Hey, Peaches! Oh, well, welcome to Fix It. We're friends. Don't let friends fix pop culture alone. I'm Adam. And I'm Jay. And you're our listener. Hey there, listeners. Ho oh, there, listeners. Oh, uh, beware of undead stormtroopers, listeners. Yes, that's right. We have a limited time event here in Visteria to see who can kill the most stormtroopers. We've Ooh. got a bunch of them. It's like a Fortnite event. Yep. Fun. That's that's right. Vlasteria is the next Fortnite island, everybody. Neat. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Sure. It's, just... gonna, it's a lot of money. It's bringing in a lot of money. Look, you guys, you guys <laughs> you like want all infrastructure. the infrastructure. You yeah. want all the perks of living in Vlasteria. You know, every couple of years, we just need to make it the Fortnite island. You know what I'm the saying? The comptroller came in and be like, hey, man, we need more money for this infrastructure <laughs> yeah, stuff. The games is, I mean, it's an island. They're printing money, man. Uh, it's, you know, what are you going to do? I hope you're comfortable with buses flying overhead. Yeah, man, that's fine. That's fine. And think about think about all the free construction you'll get. So much construction. Yeah, man. All those fourth graders, they're, they're, they're building skyscrapers all over the place. Just getting up there, getting messy. You know what I'm saying? It's good for us. It's good for them. Clack, clack to adventure. Anyways, welcome to our podcast, everyone. <laughs> I'm Jay. That's Adam. You may know us from the wildly successful YouTube reaction Ooh. channel preview. Why do you always say no? Why do you always, why do you always, I always say we're wildly successful. And you go, well, well we're kind of successful. Ah, yeah. Well, in my head, first off, I'm glad you finally caught on to the fact that every time you say wildly, I kind of go, it bothers mm. me every time. Does it really? But I but I move past it. Oh, not today. Not today. No, because we are successful, but like wildly successful is like. Yeah, no, no, no. no. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, no. it's a little fur- yeah. My My wildly is yeah. a, little fur- a little further yeah, ahead. Yeah, man. That's when I, that's when I get uh, Tesla roller skates. Tesla roller skates. Yeah, that's how you know we're doing it doing doing good okay yeah man yeah man but uh welcome to our show fix it um this is our podcast fix it where every week adam and i take a piece of pop culture that maybe missed the mark maybe didn't quite get there maybe g just oh. Key watch out now just couldn't turn its lightsaber on and we fix it and today we're going to be fixing uh 2023's Star Wars television show, Ahsoka, otherwise known as Rebels, Season 5. Because uh, the Acolyte just came out this week. Yeah. We've already watched When we're taping this, we've watched the first two episodes. And that they is were true. fine. They are pretty good. Yeah, for the most part, pretty good. I mean, we will be ending up, let's be honest, at some point we're going to fix the Acolyte series in the future. I, I can tell from the first couple episodes, like, it, this, is good, this might need a little tweaking. Sure. Um, sure. I would say with Acolyte so far, the only thing that it's missing is that it's just not very fun. It's like it. I appreciate that it's like it's it's given us like the goods in that like the 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 world feels very lived in. Like it feels it feels really Star Wars. Yes, it does. And like I appreciate that like they've given us Jedi, but it's not just like lightsaber fest. It's like just like yeah, it's just it's it, yes. The what it has the only thing it's lacking right now is this, this is the first. Is this true? The first Star Wars show, at least on Disney Plus, that was up for Mandalorian, that has really had like a brand new character. Yeah. But the thing is, Mandalorian had one main character. Yeah. For the first season, so we got to really know Din. Very much so. Whereas this, there's a bunch. Yeah. And no one really seems. To, no one's standing out. No one's standing out is like, oh, I care about these people. I, d- I know what their character traits are. For me, I just ne- I understand now why a lot of Star Wars properties have a wisecracking droid of some kind. Because, wow, we we could really use it. It's a little dry. Just a little bit. It's a little dry. So, But we'll, we'll get to Acolyte in the future. We will. But we will indeed. We're going to go back today and, and just tweak up Ahsoka a little bit. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, we're, and, and I don't think necessarily we think it needs a complete overhaul. I think this is going to be a very delicate... Because we don't know the the big plan here. Clearly, this is the first show of like, yo, man, this is the first step of the yeah. heir to the Empire Because series. even Mando season one wasn't, you know, perfect. No, but it was I pretty mean, close. Yeah, it was pretty close. It was pretty close. But yeah, yeah, this just needed a little, from our perspective, just a couple little tweaks to kind of help with the storytelling a little yeah. bit. 
But before we get into uh, fixing Ahsoka, we should probably come to our most favorite segment. We took a poll, a roll for Convo. It's a our first segment of the show where Adam and I have a list of 20 topics of conversation that were presented to us by our producer, Brian, the best producer in the business, also wanted in four states for wiretapping. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. Brian. <laughs> yeah. Sorry to blow up your spot, Brian. But he's presented us with 20 topics of conversation. I'm going to roll a 20-sided die to figure out what our first topic of conversation is on the podcast is going to be in roll for convo that is a 15 15 15 oh okay speaking of brian breaking the law with wiretapping do you even know what wiretapping is because i don't i'm assuming that's when you like tap someone's phone oh yeah right I, that, uh, that sounds, that sounds i almost said wire good. fraud like bank fraud that's something yeah that's also a thing. That's a thing. Anyways. Uh, what law do you think needs to be made? Order! It's law talk. <laughs> order, it's law talk. Law and order talk? Um, what, what law needs to be what made? What law needs to be made? Okay, well, we should set some ground rules right now, because how political were we got to be? Because Adam, it, people, what people don't really realize about Adam is that Adam was a poli-sci. Minor. Uh, and, uh, I follow politics and he's, pretty, pretty close, he's guys. He's aggressively political. Um, me, not so much. Um, so I think I, I, I don't, I mean, if we want to get into the nitty gritty of what I think we should probably keep this fun and let's make, I agree. let's make it like, entertain, I agree, entertainment but I saw laws. a glint in your eye. Oh, Cause I could go guys. I could, I guys, I could go. Here's Adam's manifesto. No, no, yeah, no. Man. Uh, let's keep it to like entertainment stuff. Oh, okay. Laws of inter- entertainment. So seeing as how we just had strikes and stuff last year. Oh, I mean, I think, I think that, uh, I think, and and I've seen a lot of stuff on this, and this is sort of uh, political, I guess, but I think that, like, IP laws uh, in regards to, like, things going into the public domain, oh, like, sure. they really should have stayed stringent on that. Mm-hmm. Because, like, Disney has made a lot of choices in just protecting its copyright on things. Mm-hmm. And, like, that's why we're getting the live-action uh, versions of a lot of these movies is so that Disney can uh, keep prolong- the clock going. They can keep the clock going on all of their on all of their copyright stuff. And I feel like stuff going into the public domain was inherently a public good mm-hmm. to a certain degree, and it's it like it bogs down our like entertainment legal system mm-hmm. like to a degree that is, I think a lot of times like. <laughs> Stuff like we hold there, like you have companies holding on to stuff longer than they probably should. Sure, just because they know that they can make money off of it. Mm-hmm. And but the thing is, is that I think the products themselves suffer because of it. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think I think like we should probably like the cat's already out of the bag on that one. So there's really no going back to. Unfortunately, no. But yeah, copyright law should be reformed a little bit to make it more. Um... I mean, because at this point, well, I mean, that's the thing with with AI kind of coming into its own a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I probably copyright law needs to be sh- shored up a little bit because, like, you know, we live in a gray area of fair use. Yeah, and it's like clearly this, you know, clearly what reaction content is is fair use. Yeah, but like, tell that to certain production companies. Yeah, or like hell, like even like Japanese companies. Like that's why how you know an- AniTube is such a hard you know. Because like no no what we're doing in that is this is this is fair use for us oh, we yeah. are commenting we are you know react this is us transforming your content by like yeah. reviewing it and stuff mm-hmm. we are not but rah, 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 rah. I was like wow okay everyone everyone calm down Every, yeah rah, I, I rah, also rah, feel rah, like rah, rah, rah. I feel like if you <laughs> I feel like there should be there should be like some kind of term limits on uh. <laughs> I feel like you should be able to sue for your movie rights back if the movies that are being made aren't good. Oh, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Okay. Oh, like so, I, like if like so I think Marvel example, should have been able to sue for Spider-Man back, or at least I mean the 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 like most open and shut case of this is that Marvel should have been able to sue sue for Fantastic Four back like a long time ago. Oh, do you know what I'm saying? I see. What you're None saying. of those movies have been any good. Like they should have been like your honor, <laughs> like did you like 
Look, we all love Jessica Alba, but like, come on. <laughs> like, it, no. Uh, uh, but you're on. The, the first 45 minutes of the Miles Teller uh, oh, Fantastic yeah. Four is actually pretty darn good. I was like, uh, I, I see that, Counselor. And but, I raise but... you the last 45 <laughs> minutes of that movie. <laughs> I see where you're going with this, Counselor. You're on shaky ground. <laughs> <laughs> Like I, yeah, people who c- create these things, well, I guess you know, Marvel or like authors, you know, like if if uh, the yeah. Jurassic Park movies, for example, like I don't know if Cri- Michael Crichton died, right? But yes, his yeah, estate should be like um, he passed before, like he passed like like uh, in the early two thousands, I believe. Um, but yeah, I think if if someone doesn't like if the guy if the kid who wrote Aragon doesn't have the rights to his stuff back by this point he should be able to sue for it back yeah because it's like hey guys that was bad mm-hmm. that was real bad like i you know what i like that i like that i think it's a great idea because the people who, who people who make stuff yeah and then like oh well giant corporation i want to make you i want to make films like your thing but then they, but then they treat mm-hmm. your property like crap yeah I was like, well, now you are that now you're hurting me because you I can't. very well argue that they're not operating in good faith. Yeah, yeah, because it's possible to make a good. I must just the uh, Aragorn. Like this could have been awesome. Yeah, and you are now. And at this point, there should have been like an air. I I think there might be. I think there might be like whispers of an Aragorn show happening somewhere. That probably like, makes more sense. The fact that they I didn't read those books, but yeah, like it, it's it's a. Uh, and, and you know, if we get some precedent in that realm, then we could we could probably classify the 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 last Airbender movie as a war crime, and I think we'd all be better for it. Hey, I know a lot of people didn't like the Netflix show, but my Netflix show, I'm sorry, we liked it. My Netflix <laughs> show great was, good, time. was good. Had a good. great time. It was very good. Yeah, it was very good, and we're all better for it. We are. But yeah, also, like that. Yeah. there should be. I feel like there should also along those lines. I feel like. The, there should be like a term limit on uh, when you can reboot a franchise. <sighs> yeah, like it's like a minimum of how many years? Like, hey guys, we just got three. We just got three Spider-Man movies. They were arguably some of the biggest movies to ever be made. Mm-hmm. They like Spider-Man One is like still to this day, I think the blockbuster of blockbusters. Like it's. It's iconic. I still listen to that Nickelback song. Yeah. You know? It seemed the love of a hero, and that's why I fear it won't do. Oh, that is a good song. Yeah. That was from Spider-Man 1. And a hero no. can save yeah. us. Yeah. I'm not going to stand here, here and wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is a good the song. That we both no. Do the- no, yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, that's... But like, it, it, like, like the thing is, is that I. I'm sorry. No, 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 I, really I know. That when, when do we ever actually sing together? And I, and it's good. And, and it's we, Nickelback. And it's Nickelback. <laughs> Nickelback, Nickelback brought Nickelback, us together. Right? Right? It is. Yeah, it's, Nick, it's Nickelback, and I had, they think I had like a a, a a guest guitarist from another band in that one. Oh, okay. Tell me more. Because they're on the top of a roof. Playing guitar in front of a a, a, a billboard oh, in Spider Man's. Like, like, I, really I, I, I watched that video a lot. Oh, okay. oh you do? Yeah, because well, well, I used to, because when it, the oh, song okay, came cool, out, man. it was just mostly the internet yeah, didn't, didn't really exist you back have, then. Yeah. You live with a girl. That's hilarious. Now, I know. 20 <laughs> years in the future from. <laughs> also, Nickelback is not that bad of a band. No, I know. They're actually not that bad. Um, look at this photograph. <laughs> um, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and I think because I think like I li- I actually liked the first I liked the first Amazing Spider-Man. Sure. Like I and I liked uh, Andrew Garfield as Peter Parker. I was very much on that train, even before No Way Home or uh, yeah, right yeah. No Way Home came out, and everyone was like, "Oh, Andrew Garfield was actually really good." I was like, "Yes, yeah. I've been saying this." Because he finally for, got. A good I've been script. saying this for years. I've been saying this for years, um, but it shouldn't have happened. It just shouldn't have happened, nope. and and they, and like literally like it's like not even it's like the worst kept secret in Hollywood that they're like oh well we made these Spider Man movies because we were gonna lose the Spider Man rights so I'm like well that's not that's not operating in good faith mm-hmm. oh that's like, not why you make a thing like Sony sh- I think legally Sony should lose its half of the contract with Marvel because of what they're doing with all the Spider Man characters oh yeah yeah man I mean, listen Craven might be decent I, but I'm. 
I'm gonna be I'm honest. I'm holding down hope for Craven. My hot take is that Craven might be the, like the big surprise. This it, is actually pretty good. Could be. Well, it could be. But it, what they're but doing it with might also be terrible. With everything else? No. No, you're, Madam no, Web. You're done. No, you're Madam done. Web. No, no, you're done. Madam Web. It's like yep, you done. don't. You clearly. You clearly are like this is. There is some kind of like. There is a misappropriation of talent and funds in a way that's like this is not. Mm-hmm. Like you're not in, you're not operating in good faith. You nope, have to nope. give the rights back. Mm-hmm. And Marvel will be like, we don't want the Madam Web. Well, you, I mean, then be like, no, you have to take them back now. Uh, fine, great, better in the vault than you doing something with yeah. it. Yeah, but uh, also, I think um, there should be. Look, I'm not trying to like stop anyone from working at all, but I feel like there should be some kind of like law. Or something of just it's like just like an oversaturation law, okay. In that, like, hey, Hollywood, we've had, and I, and I'm a big fan of this person, and I'm saying this for his own good. We have had too much Chris Pratt, we have had too much. I thought you were gonna say Pedro Mario worked out. I'm not gonna lie, Mario worked out, but you're throwing us Garfield too. Get out of here. <laughs> Get out of here sure. with that. Pedro is, is encroaching upon that line. The pr- and not- Here's the difference, though. Pedro is giving very different and very nuanced performances yes, in he everything is. he does. Mm-hmm. He disappears into a role that I don't feel like people are feeling oversaturated by him because it feels unique and different every time. Mm-hmm. Chris Pratt, I love the guy. I think he's hilarious. It's kind it's of the Chris same Pratt, thing every though. time. Yeah. You know, it's like he should have done Star-Lord and kind of just bailed for a little bit. Because we're all like, yeah, man. Well, I mean, we're on board. I think that's the. I think maybe there should be a law of the secular nature of hirings. Oh. Or at least releases. Okay. Because. El- elaborate. In that, like, for a time, there's just a bunch of movies with these people in it. Mm. Oh, boy, The Rock's another film. This is the third one this year. Yeah. Oh, Sydney Sweeney's in all these films, but they are released like inside of eighteen months. Like, listen, I'm not trying to get like not people not to have work. No, but like it's just a hey, you, we got to spread this stuff out a little bit. Yeah, guys. but I can't blame a lot of these actors because like, oh, sure. they're trying to make you got to make you got to make money when you can. Shines, yes, you know? which is why I'm kind of like, well, wait a second. Do we live unfortunately in a time now where it's like you got to hit when the the hitting is good, and then because you only have a small the window for. A, car- a career now is just too small. Yeah. So you got to get your 10 movies in, in, you know, 36 months. And then all of a sudden, like, well, I guess I aged out of whatever and I got to wait for the next good part. Or I'm just kind of floating back here until the next Quentin Tarantino finds me. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But it is, it is hard to like, it's almost in people's best interests. It's like, hey, you don't need to overexpose yourself. But also, like, Get that paper. Mm-hmm. Get that bag. Yeah. Yeah. But also, <laughs> I think there just should be some kind of law where we as a public can just, like, vote. We can just vote. Like, there's just certain certain choices and things happen, like, in the entertainment industry. And, like, the writing is very clearly on the wall that, like, we don't want this. This is not a good thing. Please stop making this. hmm we as as a public should be able to do something about it. <laughs> We're the ones trying. You're trying to entertain us. We should have some say in this. You know, it's like I already like. Look, I feel bad for sometimes for people in movies because it's like it's very clear that like from interviews and stuff that like they signed on for a totally different movie. And by the time like when you greenlight a movie, like so many things are already spinning that like it trying to like trying to pump the brakes in any way you're just going to break up in the atmosphere mm-hmm. so like i get it but like we should be able there should be some there okay here's the law oh here's the law there is a there is a government there is a government subsidy for if a movie is going really wrong okay there is a government subsidy for like it's like a lemon law where it's just okay. like hey we will like we will like pay out a x percent of your of everybody's salaries for the rest of this time for you guys to just walk away (laughs) (laughs) like clearly like madam web was like fought was like breaking up and re-entry and it should have just every show should have been just like you know what i think we're good here guys i think we got it i think you know 
at least Warner Brothers like had the stones to be like, hey, Batgirl's done. You know? It's a shame that it's in a movie that we actually wanted to see. Yeah, I don't I don't think yeah, that wasn't the wife Batgirl got. But you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like there should be there's you should get a lemon law. Sure. You'd have to investigate it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Because I think a lot of these studios would just be like, Oh, we can take a loss? Excellent. Yeah, yeah oh, this one's never sorry. Away. Yeah. yeah. Just for just for the just for the common good of the of the mm-hmm. a standard movie goer, you should be able to just walk away from a project. There should be a uh there should definitely be a, a cap on how much money a movie can, should cost to make. Oh, interesting. Also, there should uh, they need to there should be a law about how theaters make money, because the, the the studio shouldn't be getting that big of a cut of the tickets. I would agree. I would absolutely agree. But how are they going to make their money back? There's that's maybe why a movie shouldn't cost so damn much. I would. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Some of these movies, their budgets are so big that they're kind of doomed to fail from jump. Yes, they are. And there's, just because they're, they're, the budget's so big, it doesn't. But it's not. It's not garnering better movies. Yeah. So you want to like stock car it? Like everyone gets a certain. You get like the highest budget you can have on a movie is this amount of money. Yeah. And then you whatever the people, the talented people from a creative perspective will ride to the top because they can make the most out of whatever. That's why horror films are so good. Yeah, that makes sense. It only costs. You know, it doesn't cost as much to make a horror film, and, money, and they always make their money back. Yeah, that's true. That's a good. I, I like that. Actually. Superhero movies do, don't have to cost as much as they are. Also, I think that I think uh, you should be able to. I think there should be like a a, uh, a tiered tiered movie pricing. Ooh, look, I'm not I'm not gonna spend fifteen bucks to go see Fall Guy at the theater, but I'll pay seven bucks. So like a Broadway ticket, kind of yeah. You know what? I'll go. That see, I'll makes pay seven. Bucks that's to go actually see that pretty movie. good. That's a really good idea. Yeah. Like I won't, I won't go pay full prices to see certain movies, but I would pay less money to go see. Like them. an End Game, that would co- okay. That's a full price ticket, sure. But like, yeah, like a high end blockbuster movie, sure. Yeah, but like if you're if you want like mi- mid to low tier, like like romance comedies, they like should not be full price. No, but they also just they they're not in the market anymore. No, because the, nobody's gonna because nobody is gonna pay for them. But I would pay I would pay half price to go see that at the movie mm-hmm. theaters. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And yet I know what you're saying it's like oh you're not you're value, valuing certain things. I'm like no, it's just like it's just understanding the market. Yes. It's like I'm not gonna go on Friday night. I'm not gonna go see the romantic comedy. But on a Tuesday night, if it was half price, I'd be like oh okay sure yeah. Like you, it's whatever. The Lion getting... King tickets cost X amount of money because this is a massive, you know, the, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Like, holy crap, these shows are amazing. Those are yeah, hundred dollar tickets. It would also encourage but, like, people to go to the movie know, theater not knowing what they were gonna watch. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. oh, let's just go to the movie theater. Like, I've got ten bucks. Let's see what's ten bucks. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? What's a mid level f- uh, movie? Yeah. Yeah, because nothing, nothing short of a huge blockbuster anymore can make money. Yeah. So it's like, that's all we're getting. People are like, oh, we're just getting the big movies. I'm like, yeah, what else is there? It's the only safe bet right now. It's the only safe bet. And that's that shouldn't be the way it is. No. Because movie, no. movie theaters are dying. Because, like, movie theaters are dying, but we're all, we're also, we are also, like, monoculturing ourselves from, like, from what's going on in the film industry. Or at least what's, like, succeeding. Like, no, well, are, wait, are we doing the opposite of that? What do you mean? Monoculture? We're just getting like the same, a lot of the same stuff. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Like if we could like diversify like what movies we're charging to go see them, I feel like you would see a lot of stuff pop up in a theater, you know, because for some of these smaller movies, they'd be like, yeah, I'd rather fill up at seven bucks than no one go. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think also maybe if we wanted to, um, because that since pop culture is fracturing so much, and we are kind of pulling away from shared experiences. Sure. That a rules of conduct in the theater should be uh, a little bit harsher. Yeah. Because like, hey man, this is you know this is this is a theater and you're going experience. Theaters that do do that succeed. Yeah. This is a theater going experience. You need to you know we're we are there is a code of ethics here. We behave like nor you know like good good stewards of our community. Yeah. At the theater, but also maybe theaters. These sh- kids, name it, man. These kids. I don't know who it is. I haven't been to a theater in a long time. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't know. I don't but, know. like, just... th- I think theaters should maybe be, like, a common good. 
Oh, interesting. That should they should get you know. So it's like, oh well, movies are doing poorly, so the theater has to close. So the next theater is an hour away from a lot of because like there's a lot of very small yeah community theaters or megaplexes or whatever that are closing, and the next closest one isn't like it's morale, dude. It's an hour away, yeah, or something like that. And they're like, well, we're not driving an hour to see a full price movie and then no, pay twenty. Absolutely not. Like it's it's a it's a cascading effect where we are losing the opportunity to see movies with each other. Yeah. Because it a full theater at like it's it's a magical thing. Yeah. But it's going away. It's going away. So we gotta figure out a way to do to yeah. fix it. Maybe maybe it'll help bring society back together a little bit. I hope so. I don't I don't know I don't know about that. I mean we're we're not gonna have, you know, those those moments when we all go see cats and we all realize, Oh God, what did we do <laughs> together? Or yeah. you know, endgame or, you know, whatever yeah. the next big Oh yeah fun movie everyone you know twisters may be a great time if you know or horror films yeah everyone freaking out at the same time absolutely huh well we did it jay we just saw we just solved everything we did a lot of stuff Man, this, just, is, this has been real for this has been law talk this has been law talk bum bum oh <laughs> uh, we should probably fix this huh? mm-hmm. yeah it's the law jay it's the law it's the law um before we get into fixing a soak, we should probably hear all about this uh, wonderful show from our spectacular producer, Brian. He knows what he did. Uh, when Brian rolls that beautiful bean fun fact footage. Thank you, gentlemen. Producer Brian here. And today we're trying to fix the Disney Plus special event series, Ahsoka. Released in 2023, it consists of eight episodes and stars Rosario Dawson, along with a slew of other people, including the late Ray Stevenson. Here are some fun bean facts. Kurosawa films heavily influenced this season. All eight episodes were written by Dave Filoni. Lars Mikkelsen, who plays Thrawn, also voiced him on Rebels. And if you care, this has an 86% on Rotten Tomatoes and a 3.4 out of 5 on Letterboxd. Anyway, back to you, gentlemen, and please enjoy writing your fix. Thanks, Brian. Good job, Brian. Good job, Brian. Good job, Brian. You did a great job. All right, great job, Brian. Good Wonderful. job, Brian. Wonderful job, Brian. Um, Look at all that information. Before we get into fixing Ahsoka, or tweaking, I think, is kind of what we're doing this week. I, I, yes, I'm lovingly the, massaging Ahsoka. Yeah, because I'm of the mindset. I, I enjoyed the show. I don't really have a lot I don't have a lot to say about it. So I'm, I'm going to be seconding banana you just a little bit today. Um, yeah. That's, that's never happened before. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... Before we get into Ahsoka, uh, Lashi, why don't you tell everyone what happened if for those people who have not seen Ahsoka in everyone's absolute most favorite segment, we took a poll, Plot Drop. Okay, so there's eight episodes long. Uh, I'll mm-hmm. try, I'm will try. i going to do my best to kind of summarize this pretty quickly. Uh, Elsbeth, the, the woman who was just in Tales of the Empire yes. that Ahsoka uh, fought with in season two of Mando. Yep. Uh, she gets broken out of New Republic prison, or uh, on her way to prison, yeah. by someone who, two people who are force sensitive and have lightsabers and are awesome. Yeah. Uh, just like, we need to find Ahsoka. Bum, 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 bum. Meanwhile, Ahsoka has broken into a uh, Dathomiri witch temple on some planet sure. and found a spherical map to, she doesn't exactly know what, but apparently the location of Thrawn. And if yes. you remember back from the end of Rebels, Ezra and Thrawn... Uh, got bamped out of the galaxy by Purgles. Yeah. So now everyone is trying to figure out how to open this map or this little sphere that has a map in it. Ahsoka doesn't know, but she knows someone who might know, and it's Sabine. So she finds Sabine just chilling, and then Sabine somehow opens the map, finds out, oh, hey, that's where this planet is. That's where we need to go to find Thrawn and Ezra. Yeah. But then the apprentice of the the, the Jedi, ex-Jedi, shows up. Uh, it turns out Ahsoka still, uh, no, Sabine still has uh, Ezra's lightsaber, the apprentice and Sabine fight. Sabine gets stabbed, but doesn't die because you only get stabbed, stabbed in the side. And the bad guys make off of the map. Uh, Ahsoka and Hera try to find out what uh, Elizabeth was going on uh, up to, and finds out that there are still some businesses on Cor- not Coruscant on Corellia who are yes. still aligned with the Empire. And they fight some guys. Some uh, Inquisitors show up, or people who seem to be Inquisitors show up. Uh, Ahsoka finds them. They tag the ship. That they uh, they were absconded with to figure out to parts unknown. Ahsoka and 
Sabine go off to track the ship. It turns out they're flying a giant uh, circle, basically a halo above this planet. As soon as I can figure out the code, the map to find the uh, coordinates to another galaxy, they're going to bamf from our galaxy to another galaxy and pick up Thrawn. They eventually do. Yeah. But Ahsoka, uh, everyone fights. It's pretty cool. Ahsoka gets knocked off of a cliff and apparently dies by Balin, our bad Jedi guy. Yeah. Uh, and while everyone, while Sabine gets captured and everyone bounces off, hyperspace jumps to the other galaxy. Meanwhile, Ahsoka, not dead, she's in the space between. And the space between <laughs> you and her. Dave Matthews just singing there. And this is for her. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> but then Anakin shows up. And I was like, hey, Snips. And it's kind of, it's really nice. It's kind of crazy. And we yeah. see child, we see young Ahsoka in live action during the Clone and Wars. And we see the space between in live action. Yeah. Which is a big deal. Pretty cool. Uh, but Anakin imparts uh, a final lesson on Ahsoka of, because she's just been fighting her entire life and yeah. she's kind of tired. And so Anakin's like, you have one lesson left to learn. What do you want to do? And she's like, I want to live. So she kind of gets that fighting spirit back, and she's back! Huzzah! <clears throat> and she, she, jumps into, she jumps into a Purgle, and the Purgles mm-hmm. take off to yeah. the other galaxy. Uh, meanwhile, in the other galaxy, they find Thrawn. Oh no, Elizabeth is like, great! And then more Dathomir witches? Fantastic! Let's grab all these coffins full of cocaine pr- and get it back on the Star Destroyer. Yeah. The Star Destroyer docks with a giant halo, and we're going to head back to our normal Star Wars galaxy. Uh, but meanwhile, Sabine finds Ezra, who... Should be a little bit more powerful, but he's not. I don't know. I think he kicks some pretty serious butt. He could have kicked just a little bit more. Hey, Jedi's in isolation usually have. He a, was not in isolation. He had all his hermit he had, crab had friends. Little hermit crab friends. So Sabine and Ezra uh, meet up. They have a nice little reunion. Uh, the Balin and the other girl, his apprentice, show up. There's a little bit of fighty fight. Uh, Ahsoka finally shows up. The Purgles get shot at. It's terrible. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Ahsoka finally shows up. Every, the group's back, finally back together. It's great. Oh, God. The ship gets damaged. We have to make our way back onto Thrawn's Star Destroyer. In order to make it in back. In order to make it back. Uh, Ezra finally uh, makes another lightsaber in honor of Kanan's lightsaber. It was very nice. Yeah. And uh, everything's like, okay, we got to get back. And so, oh, by the way, Sabine's been force sensitive most of the time, and she's just starting to and we'll get to that. And apparently Ahsoka's old Padawan in a way that doesn't really make any, any sense. sense. But, um, but they finally get to the top of this tower, and Ezra uh, is able to get force pushed by um, Sabine onto the Star Destroyer, and but leaving Sabine and uh, Ahsoka behind to fight Elsbeth in her full on uh night sister form with a yeah, with cool. a cool uh, uh, fiery bl- green flame blade. Yeah. And uh S- Sabine and Ahsoka don't make it to <clears throat> Thrawn's ship in time. They do not. After a really cool fight and a chase, they don't make it in time. Thrawn crows a little bit and gives him a little monologue and is like, "Bye. I got I got things to do and and cocaine to sell." We But Ahsoka, we end the season with <clears throat> Ahsoka and Sabine left on this planet of the, the, that the Night Sisters originated from in this other yeah. galaxy with hermit crab people, and Ezra's back home. It fi- is, f- sneaks away from Thrawn's ship uh, and finds Hera and Chopper, and uh, Anakin's uh, Force Ghost looks over Ahsoka uh, and is like smiling. But Balin also is on the. Is also looking for something that has nothing to do with the uh, Mortis people, and is in a big on a big statue. And a big statue, yeah. Because something m- much something much bigger is happening on that planet that we don't know about, that yet. we have no idea about. And that's Ahsoka. And that's Ahsoka. Bing bang boom. That's pretty I did, I, decently fast, right? I didn't want to believe that. Did I believe that too much? No. Okay. You get caught on some details sometimes. Yeah, I was trying. <laughs> I was trying my best not to. You did pretty good. Okay. I'll give you credit. You Thank did you. pretty good. You did pretty good. I've just been like, hey, so can Sabine try to go try to go find Thrawn? They don't. And uh, Ezra's there. He pops out of a vent. And he's like, what's up, guys? <laughs> it's me. Uh, it's me, Ezra. Oh, boy. Remember from the vents? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the show was good. I remember there were, this was for last summer. It's been almost a year uh, when we're doing this. Yeah. I really enjoyed the show. Mm-hmm. There, But there were, seeing everyone in live action, I thought everyone did a great job. Yeah. Um, There's some really good performances. Everything looked good. The sabers looked good. The combat look, was was good. It, Hera in live action was good. Like there was a lot of really good stuff in the show. Yeah. But 
there were just some there just, just some story holes that just like <clears throat> that they me, do they, they didn't fill in enough it just didn't it just didn't there was something missing and i just i could never really put my finger on it there's something just didn't necessarily i th- i think for me if i had to fix like one thing and i think we've talked about this before is that like i think that like the sabine and ahsoka relationship is like ne- never is not it's like i i would have preferred they actually had left that out oh okay not necessarily like not necessarily like the either of the characters right but like i i think they like tried to put a lot of weight on it and then didn't spend really any time with it in a way that just like felt really disjointed and really kind of um i also think that like we could have we could have used a little bit more of what Thrawn is trying to make happen. We could have used a little bit more of what's going on with Balin. Like, why are they actually there? We could have used a little bit more of what's going on with the Night Sisters and like why they're actually supporting Thrawn. Like, what's what's that about? They're just kind of there. We could have used just a little bit more here and there. Yeah, and it's yeah. it's just a lot of lot of little things. There was a lot of yes, there was a lot of information that didn't make it mm-hmm. into the show. Yes, that the show felt like it needed for us to really get behind what was going on. And I'll be honest with you, um, we had the benefit of knowing what happens in Rebels and knowing these characters. But I kn- I know a good amount of people that I talk to like uh, outside of uh, you know the the nerddom mm-hmm. quote unquote. They were just like. I don't know who any of these people are. And I go, oh yeah, you probably don't. That sucks. That sucks. Like I think we there definitely needed some background for a lot of these people because you are presenting this to a when it is a live action Star Wars property. I am under the impression that you are presenting it to everyone. Yes. And you cannot tell me like, well, in the cartoon, I'm so sorry. That is not what we're talking about right now. Yeah. Well, like you said, with um, when it comes to Bad Batch. Like, I would assume at some point live action Omega is going to show up. Yeah. And for us, for all of its faults, that's going to be awesome. Yes. Because Omega be cool. is awesome. We like Omega. But for everyone else who no did one's not, going to give a crap. No one's going to care who this is. And for a lot of people who watch The Bad Batch, they're probably also going to go, oh, yeah. There's this Australian blonde girl showing up. Oh, yeah. I don't like that show I didn't like. <laughs> yeah. The show I gave up on in season one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this show did not do a great job of much like what some Marvel, you know, what Marvel shows are decent, they're decent at of, hey, you're maybe you didn't watch, you know, the movie that these characters are coming off of, but here is a time dedicated in this first episode to showing you who yes. they are, yeah, and you know what they are about, yeah. We didn't really get that, not at all, not at all. Like if anything, okay. I think, I think we can probably like get into like the actual like nitty gritty now. Sure. Well, let's before, before we do that, real quick, like what were like what are the highlights of the show? Because there were a lot of good stuff. There was a lot of good stuff in the show. Um. I mean, honestly, like some of the lightsaber fights were pretty incredible. Mm-hmm. The fight choreography and the staging of them was quite good. Mm-hmm. Balin's you fight know. with Ahsoka. Yes. The first one. Also, good uh, bad the map. guy. Balin was awesome. Balin's awesome. He's like you kind of. If anything, my only frustration is that I wanted more of him because yes. I liked him so much, mm-hmm. and I appreciated that they gave us like kind of a dark side guy who was just like, "I'm not, I'm not, like, like I, I'm embracing this aspect of the Force, but I'm not a bad guy." Mm. It's like, wait, what? What am I doing that's bad? I'm trying yeah. to, br- I'm trying to break the wheel. Yeah, you know, this whole thing is this. We just keep going around the galaxy. Keeps going, going around and around and around. So like a lot of really good individual performances. Yes, like truly. And I think they they did Thrawn justice this show. I think I think they did. Like I, is, I enjoyed him. He is menacing mm-hmm. in this and quite good. And they gave us and them incorporating Elizabeth into this. And right, did I say it right? Elspeth. Elspeth. Yeah. What did I say? Elizabeth. Yeah. Whatever. Um. You know the witch. Yeah. From the northeast. I appreciate that they incorporated her character so well, and they actually did it. It wasn't just, oh, this girl, this lady from Mando season two, remember her? They actually gave us, like, a character. Mm-hmm. Like, I appreciated that, like, the, the depth of what they got. If anything, this show, like, one of my biggest issues is that I think from a directorial standpoint, I think they could have just sped this show up. 
like a lot of the pauses it's like let's go i understand oh, we're all right i understand we're all from I, an act yes. all these actors are really having cool moments and that's awesome but like we could have we could have cut five minutes out of this episode and added some more interesting stuff in here if you guys had just picked up your cues a little bit um i think like there's people really took this show seriously and it feels like it i just think some of the structure just could have informed more of an audience mm-hmm. on who, who who these people are and why we should care and and also just like kind of given us more more information i think those are for me those are the two things that just need to get fixed in order for this show yeah. to hum yeah it kind of needed the, from uh, the first episode of x-men 97 remember when like when they went to the dance club and rogues like you know if i touch one of those kids down there i'd step all their energy and they'd be unconscious for you know for three weeks to gambit who knows that who knows that you don't and i remember the joke like yeah rogue we yeah we're on the same team man i, I know which power but it's for all the people that like often, maybe don't remember this stuff for all the people don't remember yeah we could we could use a little bit more of that mm-hmm. just for you have to protect your like your uninitiated mm-hmm. if you want people to want to join mm-hmm. and marvel does you know for the most part does a good very good job of that yes but yeah this this show definitely needed to do that yeah and it, it kind of didn't yeah, but like, yeah. I mean, the whole final episode with every, with all three of them fighting together, and then the undead storm stormtroopers was pretty cool. Because the Night Sisters, we don't in live action. Yeah, have there ever been knights? No, there haven't. No, there have not been. There have never been any li- Night Sisters in live action. Absolutely not. No. So like, seeing them actually do stuff, yeah, was awesome. Yeah, and probably yeah, we could probably yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. Um. I just I just realized like oh yeah that was pretty cool wasn't it, um yeah the whole the whole fifth episode when she's in the world the space between the world the world between or whatever with Anakin yeah that was awesome Hayden Hayden Christensen like with a good script <laughs> yeah man Hayden awesome. Christensen's a good actor I've yeah. always but it's the the George Lucas is a terrible director yeah <laughs> like there's just and and anyone in Hollywood will tell you the exact same thing yeah. Um, yeah, there was a lot of really good here. It just needed to be backed up a little bit tighter. It was tighter in the editing, and just we needed more stuff to know more about what's going on. Even if we could leave them in the same place, but we just needed more information about what led to what's going on. Yeah. Because we don't know what led to what's going on. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's get into are, the fix. Are you, do you feel good now? <laughs> I just want to make sure everyone knows that we <laughs> we enjoyed this show, and then we're not gonna you know there's not we're not gonna take some of the stuff out. We're just gonna we need to add to it. Yeah. So, okay. So yeah. what? Are you just trying? <laughs> no, don't, don't yell at us. No, no. <laughs> it's, it's not that. It's all we. It's all. It's a Jay. It's a compliment sandwich. <laughs> That's fair. Some That's people, fair. you know, people. Oh, this show's so negative. No, no, no. A compliment sandwich. We do this show out of love. We love these characters. We love Star Wars. We want Star Wars to be better than what's going on. So, like, this was pretty good, but, it, you know, it was good. But it could be better. <laughs> We're going to make it a little bit better. All right. Party. So here's the question. Okay. What information do we want that wasn't in the show? I need to know who Sabine and Hera are. Yeah. Okay. Like, I need to know who they are. Mm-hmm. It just it ju- it it drops us in media res on on who these characters are, and I think it's and I think it's be relatively easy to fix that mm-hmm. because I think all you have to do is uh, with Ahsoka finding finding the uh, little ball the ball mm-hmm. in the beginning, I think she just realizes that Sabine is the only person that's going to be able to read this thing. She goes to Hera. And then we get a whole scene with her and Hera. Like, we get, like, we can get the, like, they had some moments here and there. But, like, I need, I need them to, like, I need a, like, dinner scene with Hera and Ahsoka. Not just, because they, they were around that, you know, they were kind of in the meeting room where she was kind of walking around the, the yes. hollow projector or whatever and stuff like that. And I need them to stop being coy about where everyone is and what's happened. Like, you, they, you need that, you need that X-Men 97 dialogue. Yes. Like, they played so coy with, like, so much stuff. And it was almost like they were trying to protect Rebel spoilers. And I was like, you're trying to protect spoilers from your show, but you're also making this show the price of entry to watch your show. So, like, do one or the other. Mm -hmm. 
it's it's the kind of thing where I'm like, I don't. Also, it's a cartoon from you know ten years ago. Yeah, we don't almost, need to be. Yeah. We don't need to be precious about it anymore. Mm-hmm. Um. So like, I need to know, and also like, I need a little bit more of a status quo between Hera and I need something more interesting going on between Hera and Ahsoka. Interesting. Okay. I need a reason for Hera to be there, other than her and Ahsoka are friends. Oh, okay. Do you know what I mean? No. You mean between Hera and and Ahsoka? Oh, I, why, uh, why she's showing up at the fleet and stuff? Something. I need. There needs. I, I need something. I need a bip and bap. I need a. I need. I need something there other than we're just we're friends. Okay, we did adventures. Yeah, it's or just sh- show me the that scene can show me the depth of their friendship. Sure. And I think it comes down to in this meeting between Hera and Ahsoka, she's like, I need to talk to Sabine. And Hera's like, she's not going to talk to you. And you know why. And I don't, and I honestly, I'm going to be honest. I I know this. People are going to get weird about this. I don't think Sabine is force sensitive. (sighs) Yeah, I mean, it could go. There's, I think there's a way to do it, but it requires more time for to go back and show us that she's force sensitive. Yeah, it's too clunky. But it's, it's. She wasn't in Rebels, or they didn't. You know, by the end of Rebels, no one said, "Wait a second, are you force sensitive?" I, again, and I, it's been a while since, we, and we'll get to all of Rebels, and we can pay attention to it as we're going through it. Sure. But like, I do not remember a point being like. Sabine, are you, are you force sensitive? What's going on here? At least it wasn't a large part of the story. No. I mean, some people mentioned that how she handled the Darksaber decently well, but like now that we've seen Bo Katan, like we saw Din handle it and it was like a freaking broadsword. He couldn't. Yeah. And then Bo Katan picked it up like it was no problem using it like a knife through butter. Like, oh, okay, so the force, you know, curse or whatever, like he, may she, whoever they be worthy, be handle, able to handle this blade yeah. like, a, like a motherfucker. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so Din wasn't, but uh, Bo Katan is. Great. And Sabine was kind of, so she kind of had an idea with how to handle it. Yeah. But that don't think Bo-Katan's not force sensitive. No. So, yeah. Yeah. I think the show starts the same. Elizabeth gets picked, you know. The whole thing's the same until uh, they, she, I think, until Ahsoka and Sabine meet. And I think they need to, like, I think they need to, like, fight about. Like, they need, they, yeah, they, they need, need, they need to, they need to have that conversation of like you left me after yes. Mandalore got glassed. Yes. How could you? Yeah. Sabine, look at the and you're angry right now. Yeah. With that anger, I wasn't gonna teach you because I knew exactly what you were gonna do. You were gonna go after Gideon. Fuck, just name drop him. Yeah. And try to get, seek revenge on him for what he did to Mandalore. Yeah. And to get this to get the dark saber back. For Bo or whatever, because everyone knows each other at that point. Yeah. So, like, that, trust me, I've seen so many things, that is the path to the dark side that would have not worked out for anybody. Yeah. It's like, how can I go to the how can I go to the dark side? I'm barely Force-sensitive as it is. You told me I'm, like, the weakest person in the Force you've ever seen. Yeah. I can't even do anything. I didn't even want to do this. Yes. Like. But here I am. I just have Ezra's lightsaber. I'm doing some forms. What am I even doing? Yeah. I shouldn't even be a part of this. Yeah. Like, give us a Sabine who's like, who gave it a shot and is no longer interested in it. Yeah. A little bit more. I know that's kind of what they were going for, but it seemed like she kind of like was like, oh, maybe I could. But it was more passive. Maybe I could. Yeah. Yeah. I need a Sabine. Like, I just don't, I don't necessarily know that like this portrayal of Sabine was like really in the spirit of the character that we saw Mm -hmm. in in previous things like i feel like she, she should have been more of an asshole honestly a little bit well i mean she's been a she's so if we if we go from that that mindset of that con- that conversation that we did not have sure and hell if we i mean we could kind of show up but if we did the conversation right then like you know we could do it in like you know a five minute scene of them actually having some passion and talking back and forth or whatever or if we can hell have a soak kind of be like the more studious master at this point, because she's older, yeah. than Sabine being like the righteous, you know, anger of a younger person, even though she's in her twenties at this point. Sure. Like, but like the you know the, the we yes the rebellion won, but like the galaxy is in no way safe. Yeah. Ezra is still 
gone. Hera's off, you know, with the Galactic Fleet, with the Republic Fleet. Everyone like, just left me here. Like, what? Well, uh, and like, sure. And she can just like, fine, and fine, I'll just solve your ball. And like, Ahsoka can realize, I need to give her space. Not that sure. she's being steals it and goes, does it. Like, uh, Ahsoka like respects that. It's like, you know what? She clearly needs to calm down a little bit. Yeah. And then Sabine figures it out. And she talks through her process this time. She doesn't just like, hmm. <laughs> I did it. We're, tell us your thought process. Yeah. She works through it. And then the apprentice shows up. Which now then shows, because we, we had it built into a conversation of how Sabine was trained a little bit. Yeah. And has a, uh, has Ezra's saber. Mm-hmm. And, you know, has, and, you know has, maybe we can see her when Ahsoka shows up, like, going through the forms or whatever that uh, the robot taught her. Sure. Remember, he says, like, are you still doing the forms I taught you? Like, nah, you know, I'm not very good. Blah, 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 blah. Like, she could, we could see her with it earlier, working on some stuff. But, like, clearly, like, Ahsoka can come, even come in and be like, you know, your elbows, you know, uh, raise your elbow or whatever. Some type of, you know, teachery thing. Yeah. And then they have a fight. And then she loses. I don't think she gets stabbed. Let's not let's 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 no. take that out of the equation. So if no one argues about stuff like that, she does get beat. She's about to get stabbed and killed. Yeah. And then Ahsoka can show up and yoink the uh the person away. Uh, but you know Sabine for whatever reason there's a fire. She's in danger. Uh, Ahsoka's attention gets pulled. And I'm forgetting you know I'm forgetting the apprentice's uh name. But she absconds with a ma- map. You know offering the chase. Sure. That's it. That's it. That's your starting point. And now, and now, there's we see the the strife between Ahsoka and Sabine. We know what's going, what happened to Mandalore. This information's given almost immediately. Yeah. Well, and also it's it becomes, and I feel like it's the kind of thing where I don't think Sabine and Ahsoka remedy their relationship at all. I think Sabine just figures out what they're what they're trying to do, and like, hey, this these people are trying to get to Thrawn. And we need to get there before they do. And she's like, oh, Thrawn? Oh, no. But that also means she's like Ezra. And so it's all about... She, Sabine is along for the ride, not because she wants to be around Ahsoka, because she's trying to save her friend Ezra. Yes. And I, I, I don't feel like they ha- I don't feel like they are on good terms when they leave to go get, like, yes. there stop should, these people. Yes, because when... When on um, in episode two, when it's Hera and Ahsoka going off to the thing to find the business or whatever, which mm-hmm. I thought was cool, is like, oh yeah, I guess some businesses would still be like, hey man, business business was better under the Empire. Yeah. So like for just from a business perspective, like the New Republic kind of sucks, and all we care about is credits. I actually liked that. Oh, I, so yeah. did I. It was fun. Um, but like that could be Sabine stewing and like and cr- figuring out what the heck all the stuff is going. What you know, maybe Ahsoka is like, what's, what's this map? I just need you to figure out what this map is. I just need you to open it for me. And maybe she, that's instead of her like, oh, I'm hurt. Oh, I'm gonna be you know just in bed, you know, recovering from this lightsaber wound. Yeah. I figure this. You're trying to get to Thrawn. Oh yeah, that's good. Cause she like she goes along with them in that, and then figures out during that like. On her own, as she's stewing, she figures out that you're trying to get to Thrawn. You're trying to... That means you're trying to get to... Ed. How could you keep this from me? Of course I'm keeping this from you. Look at how you're acting. Yeah. I can't have a loose cannon yeah, yeah, like yeah, this. Yeah, 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 because yeah. these four... You know, we can't have... You know, we can't have the heir to the Empire. You know, we're trying to stop the heir to the Empire. Yeah. So like I can't have this. Yeah, no. You're 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 a loose cannon. You're a loose cannon. This isn't about you. This isn't about you. This is about protect keeping Thrawn away from everybody. Yeah. And then episode three can we can speed up episode three a little bit, because that was just mostly the fight to get to the planet. That's true. Speed that up, uh, so we can speed stuff up, get them to the planet, have them fight, and have them you know and Hera's like, can, Hera can go back to the, like hey uh we discovered a a plan. To get Thrawn back, if we if we wanted to have the whole conversation of the guy at, at that council meeting, or whatever, he's a clearly like a stooge for the. I don't like watching the remnant, the rebel, like the Republic, be bad at yeah. what they do. I, neither do I. It's just a lot of it's a lot of dorks sitting at a big long desk, being like, "Well, we couldn't possibly." I'm like, and get then the three people be like, uh, "Senator Leia Organa said you can, here. you know, she was Hera did the thing." I was like, "Yeah, it just I don't like." Yes, they won. Let them be good at this. Yeah. Just let them be good at this. Yeah, let it be okay. Let it be. Yes, let it be okay. 
let them be okay and have to fight external threats instead of being like, well, they're incompetent. They didn't have any plan to take over the galactic government, so that's yeah. why they lose. Man, that just... That sucks, man. I don't... Yeah. But having Hera go rally the troops, that's cool. Yes. Yeah. That's We could have Hera go do that and talk to Carson. And, you know, and have, or if you're gonna have someone that's like against it, have it obviously be someone is like pulling strings, like have it obviously be corruption in some capacity. Sure. And like Hera has to rally, a ar- like around this person. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Like, and then like she can enact some kind of plan that like yeah she's gonna get in trouble when she gets back, but like she's like can expose this person. Like, make it something a little bit more engaging other than just bureaucratic nonsense. Yeah. Like, I don't... Yeah. Also, hey, if we're fixing one thing about, like, the this Star Wars stuff, hey, Rebellion, your uniforms and your outfits are bad. They're bad. You look like... You guys all look like you work at a theme park and, like, not a good one. Figure it out. Because the Empire, you can say what you want about the Empire, they look fly as hell all the time. Y'all got it. Y'all got to figure it out. I'm the general. I have these these big three or five red Losses, things on. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. Doesn't think it doesn't doesn't command authority at all. Ugh. So here's what we do. Okay. Episodes one and two, we just basically kind of like fix that around a little bit. Episode okay. three, uh, Ahsoka. No, no. Episode three is uh, Sabine gets off planet. And hunts and knows where Ahsoka is. Okay. Because she kind of like, you know, through Hera or whatever. Yeah. And like demands. Oh, no, she just tags along. Yeah. You're going after Thrawn. I'm going to save Ezra. Yeah. And she's like, no, no, I'm going to stop to make sure they cannot get to Thrawn. There's like a dichotomy of the reasons for going. Yes. That's good. And so episode three was mostly the fight to get to the planet. And then episode four was like them fighting to get to the ball. And then she falls in the thing. I think those episodes, we combine them. The. Getting to the planet takes place in the first 10 minutes. Some cool fights, you know, in in, in the upper atmosphere or whatever. Oh, okay, and we're just down on the planet. We fight our way to the ball. And that almost that almost kind of goes into like what like what Ahsoka's character is going to, through. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. When I and I feel like that can tie into the lesson of like there are different reasons for wanting to do what they're going to do. Mm-hmm. And it's just like Ahsoka, like and I think it inevitably becomes in the end that like saving Ezra was defeating Thrawn. Like, and it's like, you just need to change your perspective. Like the force is going to send you a certain direction regardless. It's just how you look at it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, well, you went here to fight instead of, you went here to fight someone instead of save your, save your friend. Mm-hmm. Like, and they're different thing. I don't know that, that, that change of perspective perspective has always been kind of a Sokus thing. Mm-hmm. It's always like, she's the one that kind of could see the Jedi f- like order for what it is. Mm-hmm. And kind of like turns that that's perspective. Why I'm, that's why I'm head. bouncing. Yeah. And then she's become so rigid because she's had to fight for so long that it's like, Hey, maybe because like, if she, because if, if she, and if Anakin's the one teaching her that lesson, like, Hey, maybe chill out a little bit. Cause I think that's the thing. I think that lesson lands harder with Anakin if Ahsoka goes there specifically to stop them from finding Thrawn so she doesn't have to fight so the fight doesn't have to happen anymore. Yeah. And she's like, no, no, we need to save Ezra because, you know, one of the, the few remaining Jedi out there is still lost and trapped with Thrawn. Yeah. After everything Ezra did, remember, he saved you from the world between worlds you were going to die. Yeah. And it, it, and we could set up the whole like. Remember when he pulled you through time? Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. Set that stuff up set so we that don't stuff up. so we understand what it is when we're there. Mm-hmm. If we're not, if if you haven't like, if you don't know what's going on. So they crash on the planet. They fight to the ball. Oh, All that stuff good. happens in what in the yeah. third episode, which gives the fourth episode because Sabine's like, no, you're gonna go to Thrawn, and Balin's like, I know you want to save Ezra. You're like, yes, I do. Yeah. Let's go. When and Balin is almost in in play even more into him being the voice of reason. Yes, because he's a rational human being. Yes, like oh yeah, okay, yeah, cool man. Let's go. Yeah. We don't need to fight. That's yeah. fine. We're Let's going to go. the same place. We have the same idea. Yeah, and if she's like, she's willing to roll the dice with the strong thing to get to Ezra. Yeah, almost. To, yeah, that I mean to the point where like she's not thinking of all the ramifications. She's of just course. trying to save her friend. Yeah. 
So episode four can be, if we want to, now that we've saved some time and got rid of an episode here. Yeah. Ahsoka in the World Between Worlds ordered her lesson. But I think if we want to, we could also use this opportunity, which we did not do in the original show, of having Balin and Sabine oh, yeah. talk. Yeah. Who are you? I'm Balin, you know, blah, 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 blah. What? Like that almost, like war, the war between, the world between worlds and Balin and Sabine, like having a lore dump could almost just be an entire episode. That's exactly what I'm thinking. Yeah. In between the time that, you know, they, they're they going through between the galaxies. It's like, hey, what? Yeah. How, who? There are other Jedi? Yeah. Why, and why are and you And we could pepper in some, we could pepper in some Hera figuring out like, corruption in the republic kind of situation to rally the troops to get ready for when yeah because like there should be well maybe that's a how we a different ending a little bit different ending what if that's a different ending <sighs> because what if harry does rally the troops a little bit and so when thrawn comes you know hyperspace jumps back there's a fleet waiting for him so it's not exactly He's able to escape clearly because he, he his machinations need to continue, but he doesn't yeah. come back not a, unaccosted. Sure, because um, he, he clearly did. Yeah, or unless they jump str- somehow jump straight to Dathomir, but it felt like that know. was who knows. But we get we have the conversation between Sabine and Balin, so we can get Balin's lore dump. Because who the hell is Balin? Yeah, we don't know. We don't know. Like we don't know. And he's and it, the thing is, is that we get an incredible performance. But there's just not enough runway to really get the lift off, mm-hmm. and it's really a shame that he passed. And I, I'm of the firm, I am of the firm mindset that he gave such an inc- incredible performance as that character that made that character not coming back unacceptable. And people are like, "Oh, we we obviously have to write him out to be respectful." And I'm like, "No, I think it's actually disrespectful to write the character out because the only reason we care about that character is because of his performance. Mm-hmm. So you have to recast that character, and you have to get someone that's going to do just as good of a job, if not better, because to respect the work." Yeah. Because like, yeah, I really loved that. He was my favorite part of the whole show. Yeah, he was great. Like. And now we would also have more. Good saber. Yeah, it's good saber. Good saber. Good col- Interesting color. Interesting it wasn't color. red. It, it wasn't, wasn't red. red. It was like more of a deep orange. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty it was cool. Blood orange. Yeah. So yeah. now we have more time. So it goes through her journey. And then she's like, oh, well, okay. She comes back. She chooses to live. She's like, you know, Anakin can be like, you know, same lessons, doing the stuff like, you still got to fight. Yeah. But fight for life, fight for a living. Yeah. You know, fight for the, you know, the ones who are still here. And Ezra is still here. Yeah, and maybe even maybe Attic can be like, yeah, Ezra is still here. Yeah, you can still save. You someone. can still save someone. Who can save? Who knows? Because the Jedi need to return. Of course, that's just me trying to get rid of the sequels. But whatever. So Ahsoka comes back, jumps into a pergle. Bow, she's gone. It's not what we're doing here. <laughs> I know. But so and then once we get to the next planet, right now we have a little bit more time. That maybe if we wanted to, we could have a little bit more with the Night Sisters. I just, think just yeah. a little bit because remember this is the first time we're seeing them in live action. Once we get to the planet, I think there's a lot of stuff that works. I yes. think it's like I think the only things that really need to be fixed, like or remedied, is that like I think we just need like Ezra just needs a tweak, and I think we just need to spend some time with the Night Sisters. Mm-hmm. And if we are gonna get rid of, uh, I can't not I'm gonna say her name wrong, Elzebeth. 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 Mm-hmm. If we're gonna if she's not gonna make it out of this show, I think she deserves a little bit more shine. Yeah. Like we need more, like Elsbeth and and the Night Sisters. We need to figure out a lore dump. Yes, maybe they can. With you know what, if what we can do. So that was episode four, right? We just did episode four of the lore dump with Ahsoka in the World Between Worlds, uh, Balin and uh, Sabine talking about stuff or whatever. Episode five is Ahsoka jumping. So yeah. while she's out of the picture for a little bit, uh, while uh, uh, David Tennant is giving telling her a story about a, a sto- uh, in the galaxy far, you know, a long time ago, I'm going to far, you know, far, far away. It's like, ah, bah, bah. Um, that Thrawn can be like, you want to go see Ezra? Sure, it, it, it doesn't matter. Like, yeah, I know where I he don't, is. I, I know where he is. Also, he's he can't stop me. Like, yeah, I'm Thrawn. I've I've got this situation on lock. That does. Oh, you, that's you, that's actually pretty on character too. What, yeah, you can't. Sure, whatever. That's I don't care. We're not. You you helped all of this. And you said it in the show. You helped you know do this. You gave up the map. Yeah. So. Here is your boon. You can go find Ezra. That's fine. 
And then he turns to the I'll ba- tell you where he is. Yeah. And he and then he turns to Balin and I'm again forgetting the girl's name, but like you can go kill him. But Balin's and Balin's like, yeah, let's go do that, knowing full well that his goal is I'm not going to do that. Yeah. I'm here for a completely yeah. different. I just need some, I just need you to give me some horses so I can dip. Yep. Yeah. And I think that's what he tells his apprentice. Like you can, I'm. You know what? You've been my apprentice for years now. I've taught you basically everything you need to know. If you want to go after her. That is your choice. Yeah. But, but our, our our paths, like, my path is diverging. If you'd like you, to follow me. Abs- yep. That's You are fine. more than welcome to. But, but uh, like, e- there is even, like, a united. Great job. You did it. The that's choice, about as. The choice is that's yours. That's as, you know, that's as, you know, the Jedi may have had a lot more pomp and circumstance, but it meant basically the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. I, I don't feel ready. No one does. Mm-hmm. No one does. Every, everyone's pretending. Mm-hmm. I'm Balin. What's up? I'm mysterious. <laughs> oh, and when they fight on the planet to get to the map, uh, 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 Sabine beats the apprentice. Oh, sure. So she can, because the apprentice won in episode one, Sabine wins round two, which gives her I don't a, think, here's the thing, and I don't think Sabine wins as a Jedi. I think Sabine wins as a Mandalorian. She absolutely wins as a, no, no, she absolutely wins as a Mando. She does not beat her straight up. Yeah, no. She beats her with Mando cunning and, and tech. I, I think she's just real. I, I think, if anything, that fight makes makes her realize that, like, that's just not who she is like she didn't yeah and it's like yeah i understand you didn't train me because like you knew it was going to happen but like like i am who i am and it's like i understand that you wanted me to be something different but like this is who i am i think there's got to be some kind of like ownership over that and it's also interesting to me for someone to to accept jedi training and then be like nah man this but like like not even go through and then realize being done being like you know what being a jedi sucks i don't want to do that I get a laser sword? Sure, fine. But that's the only cool thing well, about this. Well, because, like, Grogu is not enough of a fully realized character who doesn't have enough agency yet to no, do that. He's so a baby. Even, he's, a, he's a baby. He's a baby. So he chose his dad, and that's great. Yeah. So he's going to be, like, a, a, a Mando, or, you know, a Jedi who chose to be a Mando. Sabine's going to be a Mando who could have just, you know, you know level one abilities. Sure. But that's it. But just level one abilities, and she can also use a lightsaber. Yeah, that's it. But yeah, she beats as a, beats her as a Mando. So like that means the apprentice is like, no, I'm still young and like, uh, this this will not stand. Yeah, no. I'm going after Sabine. Yeah, absolutely. He's like, that is your decision to make. I you know I I hope our paths cross again, because because Balin is awesome. Yeah. So he goes off on his path. She goes off on hers. Uh, and you know, Ahsoka, you know, spend more time with the Night Sisters. Sabine f- may, uh, meets up with Ezra. Like, and we, f- I, like, I'm it, the one thing I was really interested in is like, why did the Night Sisters choose Thrawn? Like, what's happening here? Like, what's the dynamic? Mm-hmm. We they don't have a, like I don't. There's no relationship between them in a way that like, obviously they're not going to help this guy if they don't have some kind of ulterior motive here. Well, I think it was it was told in the show but could have been shown better if so Thrawn and Ezra show up it just happens to be the Night Sisters home planet and he gets to talking to him cuz he's Thrawn and he's like, you know, I can offer you, you know, information and stuff about, you know, back to the other, the other galaxy what have you. And I was like, I just need to wait back. Well, oh, we're Night Sisters. We have a way to telepathically talk to other Night Sisters a freaking galaxy away. Yeah, man. So you get us, you you have transportation, we'll make the call, and that's our deal. But like, and I think they said that, but like- It wasn't clear. It wasn't super clear, and it could have been shown of like, like oh, that's how, I think it's all that I said I had- isn't enough to me. Like yeah. there's got, it's got- there, It was told not shown. It's like, it are, you, are, are you trying to go back with him? Are you, do you have man, like machinations for something bigger? Yeah. What's happening here? Yeah. Like that wasn't clear to me. Yeah, that needs to be explained a little mm-hmm. bit better. Uh, so then, while that's happening, Ezra and Sabine can have their big uh, meeting, and it's really nice. It may be a little flirtatious because, like, clearly it seemed like in live yeah, in the live action, like you guys like each other, right? Because yeah, he the cart- can smell her. What he can smell her, right? Yes, right yes. from Rebels. Oh yeah, remember? I'll, I'll remember. How you smell? Well, she smells him. Oh, she smells him. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Oh boy. Oh boy. I didn't mean to make it weird. Um. But like, and Ezra, I would love to, you know, Ezra like showing off his training a little bit before before the fight, you know, hap- eventually happens. Yeah, they can show, you know, it was like, what have you been doing? Oh, you know, I'm practicing. I mean, not a whole lot to do, but I'm hanging out with my friends. 
uh, tinkering here and there if I could, but like I've been practicing. Oh, doing what? Oh, you know, let me show you. Just force mash and stuff. Just yeah, I actually liked him as just a force martial artist. I was at when he like built another lightsaber. I was almost kind of let down because I was like, I kind of like the idea of Ezra just absolutely going to pound town <laughs> with the force. Yes, you know, like yes. that was good as. Well, we saw a little bit of it in the uh, the acolyte. Yes. Um, but like. If Ezra didn't have it, he, he gave us Sabine his lightsaber, and he's like, well, I'm on a planet with Thrawn, and he has a bunch of stormtroopers still. So I like, need to know how to kick ass. So, like, Kanan and Ahsoka kind of taught me how to fight, and, but I never really had time to really focus on stuff, but without, at least fighting without a lightsaber. But yeah. I've had five years, so, like, I mean, not, that, not to totally change Ezra, like, you know, he changed classes or anything, but, like, if given oh, the no, time. he's a monk now. But well, he can be a little bit more of a monk. Yeah. And, like, actually, when the fight comes, because then while, and then while Sabine is uh, traveling or, or talking to Ezra, then the apprentice can run into the people that Sabine ran, ran into. They, that fight can still happen to show off that there are some pe- bad people on the planet, yeah. or whatever. Then we could have the, we could actually see the apprentice, like, rally this group. Because sure. she didn't on camera. Yeah. She goes into camp, but we don't see her actually like, hi, I'm your leader now. Yeah. And like That would be a good, like, who is this little woman? Who is this girl? Which we now know a little bit more. Give, her, give us some kind of characteristics other than anything. I'm a girl who has a lightsaber. And an attitude. Yeah. Yeah. That's really all we got. So then, you know, that puts everybody basically in place for the last two episodes when uh, the girl shows up to fight everybody. And then Ahsoka can show up, confront Balin. And Honestly, Balin... I was kind of fine with how the last two episodes landed. Yeah, but that gets everybody into the space to where we need them to be in the last couple episodes. And it all means more because we know these characters better. Mm-hmm. And Ezra also kicks more ass because he's actually like punching people away with the Force. Yeah, it's cool. And it's awesome. Yeah, it's good. And it's something we haven't seen before. Nope. And it makes sense. And it makes sense because he said he had time to practice. Yeah. Watch me, I can punch you with this boulder now. You, uh, excuse me, what? Yeah. Had time, man. I had time, five years. Yeah, I think uh, it, from going through this together, I feel like it really is like, we just wanted to know everyone better. Mm-hmm. And we just, just give us actual human stakes. Mm-hmm. And then, I mean, you were, we were talking about it earlier, the last shot of like Hera showing up to kind of like meet the Throns. Mm-hmm. I think they get absolutely... F- bodied sure oh I think yeah the last, i think the last shot is like a rebel fleet like completely obliterated or yeah not how, like not like the whole thing but yeah, i'm saying like whoever ships showed are it, like, yeah yeah ships are wrecked yeah it's, it's bad it, it's bad that that ring and the and the star destroyer together and with some night sister magic maybe we haven't seen because yeah. in the in the comics people were pulling off like yeah some force magic stuff, stuff. Maybe because the sisters were there with what's ever in those coffins. Yeah. Maybe we get, maybe we get just a little sampling of what throne of what's going on. What's because maybe like? they would use one of the use you know they, they they chant around one of the coffins or whatever and it glows. Yes. And all of a sudden it kind of gives like, oh no. Yeah. Oh no, they're bringing in force abilities into capital ship fights. This is really bad. Yeah, it's really bad. Thrawn's been cooking for five years. Yeah, this is bad because, and that gives us a much more jump, like a jumping off point where we're like, oh, like it makes season two must watch. Yeah. Whereas season two is like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, because uh, Palpatine didn't want any anyone else with the, with the ability to use the Force anywhere near anything. And this is why. And this is why. And now Thrawn's like, and with the heir of the Empire uh, books, is like, no, no. Having uh, you know force sensitives on your side is actually like they're pretty dope. It's you pretty know? awesome. They're pretty cool. You should probably yeah, have, pretty cool. probably have them on your side. Yeah, because especially since there aren't many right now. Like yeah. if you have if you find somebody, uh, you want to use them. Oh yeah. And so like, yeah. Then hair is like uh uh oh. And then during the battle, during the battle, we can see Ezra bounce off the ship. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe like that's maybe the last shot is, um, like Hera hearing Ezra on the comms, mm-hmm. and then that's it. Mm-hmm. Chopper At- gets a signal, and then Chopper like 
does chopper as stuff. As their ship is, like, going down somewhere or something. I don't or, know. Dis- uh, disabled. Let's yeah. just say, you know, a couple of ships get destroyed, a couple of ships get disabled. Um, but Chopper, you know, there's, Chopper picks up a signal from one, some, you know, a, some uh, an escape pod, and you know, Chopper, what are you doing? Of yours, you know, and you know, gets a thing, pulls a thing, and it's like because it's something that he heard from you know the show or whatever. Yeah. And then they pull in a thing, and it's like Chopper's like, and then he's like, hey, Hera, because he's doing those badass you know stormtrooper things with the with the red. Oh cloth. yeah, those are awesome. Hey, Hera, they were uh, awesome. We gotta work it out for us, huh? Like fade to black. Yeah. Oh yeah, and and then bailing on the thing, whatever the heck that's going, whatever the heck that's doing. And Ahsoka being there with the owl and Anakin overlooking her. Yeah. Good job, Snips. Oh boy. Yeah. Just it's mostly the same. We just, just just more information. Yeah, and I, I and a little a, faster, a little bit more interpersonal relationships that actually yes. make sense. Interpersonal relationships. Like that's all you need. Yeah. Like you, like you can use your other characters to inform me why I care about these characters. Mm-hmm. 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 Like that's it's mm-hmm. it's that simple. Mm-hmm. It's that simple. Okay. Well, I think we did it, dude. Yeah. I think that I think that works. That hums. Yeah. Just a little massage. Just a little bit more Ooh. information. Especially like, especially having those night sisters kind of be like, uh oh, it's like, oh boy, we need someone who knows how to use the force to help this out. Who could possibly come to our aid yeah. in our time of need? As the remnant just got <laughs> the heir to the empire, just right the camera. The heir to the empire just showed up, everybody. I'm again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I think we did it, my friend. We did do it. That's Ahsoka. We fixed it. We did fix it. That was good. Ooh. Yeah, that used a lot more brain power than I anticipated. It is, and it's also a little hot in here. What do you mean? <laughs> I hate you, Summer. Oh, uh, I hate you. What are we? <laughs> what are we? What are we recording next week? Oh, next week is something you are going to be taking the lead on, sir. It is the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Oh, well, I think okay. This is going to be a weird one. I think for League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, I in, in lieu of fixing because we're going to talk about this movie. And it's a train wreck. I haven't seen it in uh, a very long time. Uh, I think I think we we both come up with this is like pseudo diet coke fixing. I think we both come up with, or we can work on it together. However, we decide to do it, uh, we just come up with our own own League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Oh, I think we take like a but like a an assortment of fictionalized characters so that we'll, have to go on an adventure of some kind, and they're villain. Like, do we have to like maybe put them in a in a hat? Like uh, other i other characters that are oh that could be fun that are an i or what uh, what are copyright what am I saying uh, or in the public public domain? Yeah, in the public domain. Yeah. And be like, okay, well, these are th- that could be fun. We'll we'll figure out some some fun way and to do and it. it. Does it ha- is it the same? Are the people who were in the movie you fair have game? Too, you have so many questions. Right well, now. Can, or, or, do, or, or, or do we leave them out? <laughs> we leave them out. Okay, great. Yeah, they're not, yeah, make, yeah the movie sure. characters yeah. aren't in. That's okay, how great. it works. Okay, great. Come on now. Okay, Come great. on now. Um, uh, <laughs> thank you guys so much for listening. If you guys are catching this wherever you catch your audio podcast, um, let's uh, let's leave us a five star review. Let me let's uh, write a little comment. I like to read them; they're really fun. And if you're catching this on YouTube, you know what to do: like, subscribe, hit that bell, do that YouTube that you do so well. And as we end every single one of these episodes, heartbreak feels good in a place like this. It's the undead stormtroopers that you don't see coming. I might use it at the beginning. I don't remember, but like they really didn't. They walked away. From because the, they bodied all of those stormtroopers, yeah, and it was pretty cool. And then they remember they force pulled it and then oh, shot. Yeah. That was awesome. And then all of a sudden they're like, hey, "Oh, we're, we're fine. Oh, but they're fine." Ah, they could still couldn't shoot anything, but we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.